and I never would have known that were it not for our communications, were it not for the way that we uh, talk with each other in such honesty and in such candor. Here's what I think is problematic. When we have people like the many, 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 the hundreds of people who I, whose comments I read who are so quick to call me a racist and a white supremacist, I'm thinking that sort of name calling doesn't lead to the kind of communication that is helpful to anybody, to anybody. So this is, you know, this is why I thought this was an important thing for us to talk about. You, you, want, you want a broader population to understand your plight, to understand what you're dealing with, to understand the issues that face the African-American community every day. That's good. But that communication doesn't happen when you call me names. I'm not the bad guy here. I am not the bad guy. I may not be the saint that you look for. I'm not going to I'm not going to take up with the Black Justice League who stormed uh, President Ice Gruber's office uh, on Princeton's campus to demand the removal of the Woodrow Wilson name from the Woodrow Wilson school. I'm not going to do that because I don't think that it should be removed. Does that make me the bad guy? I well, well, so. well, I would say in that particular case, um here, here's what here's what here's what you want to think about um, in terms of being of of not sounding like a white supremacist. And again, I'm not saying it in the David Duke kind of way. I'm saying it in the subtle bias kind of way that says, you know, that that ends up leading to conclusions that 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 find that whiteness is just better. There are lots of black people who are white supremacists too. There are lots of black people who won't, who won't do business with other black people, who won't support black business, who, who don't don't right. want to be around black people, don't want to live in black neighborhoods, right? right. So. Um, what, what you want to be careful is this idea that um, that black people can achieve uh, their progress by um, getting white people to understand our plight. Um, there are some black people who think that way, you know, and that's more of the integrationist kind of approach. You know, they we shall we're going to march and we shall overcome. We'll let the police beat us upside the head with heads with, with batons, and so that people will feel sorry for us and give us political gains. But then there are other people who say, you know, we don't really care what white people think anymore. We're gonna go and fight for what is ours, and and I think that I I really truly honestly I will just say this: the Jewish community is often used as a prototype of what Black people feel they should do in terms of unifying, building businesses, educating our own children, standing up for our own issues. Uh, and maybe you can help me. I mean, you're Jewish, so maybe you can help me. You know, know the difference between myth and reality, but the perception of the Jewish community amongst many. African American people who are self determined is right. to say, okay, we need to do what they're doing. They, they're 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 a small group and they're they've gained a lot of power by sticking together and building things of their own. They're not so right. interested all the time in trying to get everyone to like them. Even if you don't like the Jewish community, you have to respect them because they've got Agreed. that power. Please Agreed. go ahead, That's elaborate on that. An interesting point, and I think that you know, I'm, uh, what I see is today the Asian community has followed the example of the Jewish community of 50 years ago, and the Asian community is totally getting it done. And I think what the, uh, the, the key components here in the Jewish community and now in the Asian community is one, an absolute commitment to education, absolute commitment to education, two, absolute commitment to family. Now, in the black community, the number of children born out of wedlock is very troubling. Uh, a family without a father, and I understand that there are sociological reasons why the men prisons, are the prisons. When remember, black people were have always been hunted. Black men, there's no, there's really nothing feared more in this society than the black male. Black men are very scary to a lot of people, yes, and they they're scary to police. And for there's a tradition and of other hunting, black people, by the way, and but, to, other to, black to, to some other black people, but not not everybody. I know. It, and I a know. lot. And, and so 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 I agree with you. I I agree. I mean, I talk all the time about the family issue, um, but you know, it's family it's, and its education. You want to look to the Jewish community as an example of how to get your act together, and 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 you're quite right in saying we don't care about being liked because the Jewish community has never been liked but the Jewish community has totally kicked ass we've gotten it done you know yes are, but remember though remember though the Jewish community has been able to really get it done here in America in because America. they were able to escape the persecution they were going through in Germany I've right said you, uh, so so before, right so go ahead again because it bears repeating if I were a black person I would not live in America I would simply not live I wouldn't <laughs> 
Wow, that that's got to be one of the coolest things any white person has ever said. I I I love it. I love it. I I agree. I I go all around the world never. and I tell people I that's never, what you have to do. Because I totally get that in America, black people will always be looked at a little bit differently. I get that. In the same way as a Jew, I will never live in Germany, ever. You know, I've done a lot of traveling in my life, and I've I. Once I had to go to Oslo, uh, Norway for a business meeting and we stopped in Frankfurt. I didn't even want to get off the plane. I don't ever want to be in German. I, I don't want to be in Germany. I don't ever want to be on German soil for the same reason that if I were a black person, I would never live in, I'll live any place else. Not here, not here. So I totally get that. Um, but do you agree with me that you know, there are differences and is it, is it wrong? to identify the differences between black people and white people. Is it wrong? Um, I don't think no, it's wrong. No, I mean, I, I identify the differences all the time, and I think yeah. it's... Um, I think is, it's it racist? I, I, is it racist to say that, you know, there are ways in which black people are different than white? Is, there, is it in the same way, you know, people have said that I'm sexist because I see men and women as different. They are different. Should they be afforded equal rights and equal opportunities? Well, yes, of course, but they are different. I don't think that by identifying those differences, I'm sexist. In the same way, I don't think by identifying... I was telling this to my son the other day. I'm shopping at uh, Fairway, my local grocery store here, huge grocery store, and I've done this for decades. Sometimes I'm wandering around, you know, the, the store, I'm wandering by the meat case, and I don't know what to make for dinner, and I see an old black woman, and she's, you know, looking at, I don't know what she's looking at, some, something in the meat case, I will go over to this woman and say, what are you going to do with that? Tell me, how are you going to prepare that? What are you going to do with that? And when she gets over her initial, you know, sort of discomfort or hesitation because I've just sort of stopped her while she's doing her grocery shopping, we usually get into a conversation. And I've, I've gotten some of the best recipes from these women because I know, I know, I could just tell by the way she's looking at the product. I could tell by the way she's, you know, she picks up the package and I... I could tell she's going to make something absolutely fabulous that I know nothing about. So I'll stand. I'm talking to this woman. I, I, I've gotten to know many of these women. My son says to me, you know, that's really racist, Mom, that you're making the assumption that because she's an old black lady, she knows how to cook. I'm saying, well, I think it's a, probably a pretty good bet that if she's an old black lady, she knows how to cook. And I don't know what she knows. Is that racist? Is it racist? I don't think it's racist. It's recognizing that this woman has probably cooked her whole life. She's probably learned how to cook in an innovative way. This is not a woman who uses seamless. This is not a woman who is, do you know what seamless is? Oh, seamless is uh, when you, is in New York, it's, it is the thing that you use your computer and you, you order your food and it arrives on your doorstep. This all, these old black ladies, they do not have pizza and Chinese food delivered to them on a regular basis. I know that these old black ladies have been cooking their whole lives. I want to know what they know. And once we get into a conversation, it's sort of delightful to hear how they, particularly how they use unusual ingredients that white people will look at and think, oh my God, you know, what, you know, what, it, what is that? What, what even is that? Much less, what do you do with it? So I don't think it's racist. I think it's acknowledging that we have differences, acknowledging that maybe we do different things well. I don't think there's anything racist about it. You tell I th me. Am I, I, think, I think, well, here's what I think about acknowledging differences. Um, I agree with you that um, in a certain context, it's certainly fine. I mean, in fact, uh, people talk about a colorblind society, and I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. You don't want a colorblind oh, because oh. You're, not, you're, you're not seeing the differences. So, so uh, what I will say um, to add to what you're saying to kind of help shape it a little bit is to say that um, there's a difference between uh, sort of seeing the difference and, and really respecting the difference, right? If you see the difference and, and you truly respect it, um, and as opposed to sort of seeing it as a type of inferiority, then I think that's okay. And, and I agree. I, I think that the example you just gave, you, you weren't saying anything about them being inferior. Uh, you were just sort of looking at the differences and, and kind of learning from that, right? right. Um, now, on the other hand, I think there's also um, th this idea of, uh, for many people of color, sometimes um, people who see a potential difference in you or make an assumption about you being different uh, based on a stereotype or a preconceived bias, it can almost put you in a box. You know, it's like, uh, so for example, when you say, well, they're old black women, of course, they, 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 I'm sure they know how to cook. Um, some people might feel, well, 
why can't I be more than that? Why can't I be a human being first? And because I go through that as a, as a black man, as a black man, there are assumptions and stereotypes about us. You know, all, all of you know how to play basketball. All of you can dance. All of you do certain things in the bedroom, right? Just, just all these stereotypes, or, or it, it's to the point where sometimes if you are that black person who's different uh, in in a certain way, or who's just unique, um, you know, you can feel like you're not black enough, or you, you know. And I've actually had those white friends who would say. Boy, you're not black enough. You're supposed to smoke weed. Don't, don't all the black men smoke weed? No, I don't smoke. I don't use any drugs. You know, so so ultimately, I think that seeing the differences is one thing, but I think really kind of leaning on that uh, and focusing on that can can make a person feel a little bit limited. You know, uh, and and that's the thing. That's one one thing I loved, and I agree with everything what you what you said about leaving America at least on a temporary basis, because I can say this: when I went to Africa and when, when I went to China, I felt a freedom I'd never felt before, because when people in Africa meet me they don't care that I'm black because everybody's black they want to know me as a human being first and that allows me to kind of just be a person and not be the black guy anymore and that's the thing it's very very difficult in America to go into all these spaces where you're always the black guy which comes with all these you know all these other microaggressions and things like that um so I'll let you get the last word uh you know before we finish we also I think we also have to stop being so quick to be offended I think that's a mistake. I think that when we're so quick to find, you know, offense where there is no offense, no offense, ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Uh, you know, I will read all of the comments that are posted to this uh, to this broadcast. They matter to me. I, I learn from them. But I so hope that some of our viewers will come to understand. I'm 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 doing the best I can to understand. Uh, I don't feel it's my job to take up somebody else's cause, so I, don't expect me to, you know, to do that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But I appreciate our differences. I applaud our differences. I learn from the fact that we're different. Um, there are, you know, there are assumptions that you can make about me because I'm a, I'm a mature white woman. There are assumptions I make about you because you're a you know, you're a, I guess, a mature. Uh, how about y- young, young, <laughs> handsome, intelligent black man? There you go. Let, let, let's, let's throw that out there. <laughs> okay, right, right. You're articulate, right? You're articulate. Oh, you're, you're so articulate. You're so <laughs> articulate. <laughs> you're well, articulate. well, you know what? I, and I, well, I'll say this, you know, I, uh, I love you to death and I don't care what anybody says. Uh, I, 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 I encourage people to um, join the conversation. If, if, if your whole comment consists of, you old racist white blankety blank that's not adding anything i mean get, you know make your argument don't feel like you have to agree with anything susan said or what i said but just know that you know when you're communicating and you're listening you're learning and and here's the here's the thing and this is why this is another reason why um i i love talking to you and i want people to know this too um I, i've seen you in situations where you know where we invited you to dinner and you were the only white person and I and it wasn't until that situation happened that I started thinking about how rare that really is that someone just, is just comfortable doing that. I mean, the only only other examples like I, I only times I see stuff like that are like maybe some some little Jewish agent who's sitting with a bunch of basketball players, you know, <laughs> and then he's gonna make a bunch of money, or, you know. But for the most part, uh, you were just sitting with us as 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 friends, and Absolutely. and so I, I think that I'm hoping that people will at least see the intention behind uh, what you're trying to do. So um, I I appreciate the fact that you're having this rough dialogue. And I think we should have more of these, you know, it, it doesn't happen enough, in my opinion. I agree. All right. Agree. Well, thank you, Susan. This was this has been a blast. A blast as ever, boys, as, as a blast as ever. Yes, absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, um, I want you to go check out Susan's book. Uh, Susan's or oh, she she is the Princeton mom and her book. What did, give me the title of your book again? The title of the book in hardcover, it's called Marry Smart and softcover. It's called Marry by Choice, Not by Chance. And I'm on Twitter at the Princeton Mom. Right. But leave nice comments. Come on. What's the matter with you guys? Leave nice <laughs> comments. I'm not the enemy. I will say this: my my tribe does not leave nice comments, yeah. but all the time. Some some of them do. Um. And, and well, the, I mean, the, the thing is, out of fairness, you know, not all your comments are nice. You you've hurt. You've made some people mad. Hurt some feelings, right? So that's sometimes that's how things work. That's how. I what I've said that's offensive. I swear to you, I don't know what I've said that's offensive. And see that right there was an offensive statement. <laughs> I'm offended that you're offended now. Right, there we go. See, everybody's offended. So we have to stop being so offended. I think we have to all grow up here and stop being so offended, and the world would be a better place 
if we weren't mm-hmm. so quick to pick up on microaggressions when no offense was intended. Well, it's, it's a tough battle. I mean, we got a big mess, so maybe maybe over time it'll it'll correct itself a little maybe, bit. Maybe when there's or, a Republican in the White House, I think you know. Oh, we we'll talk about that next time. We'll talk about the next time. All right, everybody. Well, uh, once again, this is Miss uh, Susan Patton, a.k.a. the Princeton Mom, and me. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and uh, this, this is our segment. We call it Black, White, and Politic- Politically Incorrect, and what I want you to do is leave your comments, share some thoughts, try to add to the dialogue. Don't just say, you old white racist blankety blank, you know, or you old Uncle Tom Coon because you're talking to about really the cooning word. Uh, you know, right. let, let, let's, let's have a conversation that makes sense. All right. Well, until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.